I've dropped the bottle. Let's get the black lid. Okay. See, I'll be honest with you.
these days. I'm going to leave it all behind. Hey, man, I was at work today just singing to the top of my lungs. Just felt good. I mean, one of these days, all these troubles and trials that we're going through, all these, you've heard me say it, I'll say it again. It's going to be nice to go to a place where we don't ever have to pray again, ain't that right? Now, right now, prayer is my lifeline. You know, these little babies that's just been born, they got that umbilical cord while they're in their mother, that's their lifeline. Jesus is my lifeline. Prayer is my lifeline. But one of these days, that's going to all be over. I'm going to be in his presence. Now, I've been in his presence spiritually, and it's a great place to be, Doug. But one of these days, I'm going to see him for myself. I'm going to see him for myself. And if it wasn't for being in a holy body like into his that the Bible tells us, we're going to get where your knees ain't going to ache and your feet ain't going to ache and your back. We couldn't even be able to handle it, amen. I mean, the very disciples that was with him and walked with him and talked with him and put their hand in his side, those very ones, and when John seen him in his glory, he fell as a dead man. He couldn't handle it. But one of these days, Jesus is going to give us a body that's going to be likened unto his. All this is going to be behind us. There'll be no more praying. Now we're going to have communication with him still, thank God. But it's going to be praising him. It's going to be worshiping. And no, we need to get to doing more of that while we're right here. Amen. Amen. Somebody got a song on your heart tonight. It's Wednesday. I know you're tired. I'm tired. I'm, I worked as hard today as I have in a while. I know Levi's tired. He worked hard too. But I come here to serve the Lord tonight. To, hey, he was tired when he went to Calvary. He was so tired and beat down and couldn't carry his own cross. Had to have help, amen. So he had to get some help, but he still went. We can give him some glory and honor tonight. He's worthy of our praise. I'm glad to be tired. Amen. I might be tired and aching, but I'm not in the hospital. I'm not in the nursing home. I'm going to go, I'm going to go at it again tomorrow, amen. Thank the Lord. Somebody got a song tonight, anybody? I never claim to be no singer, but I do know that Jesus saved me. Amen. And Jesus changed my life. And I'm thankful to the King tonight for what he's done for me and continues to do for me on a daily basis. And, uh, and time and time again, and back when I was, uh, back when it was just me and him, this song come on my heart time and time again, and, and this song means a lot to me, Tanner. I'm doing it for him. So. Thank you, dear Lord, for being so good to me. When I was alone, you took me in your sweet company. You gave me new hope, said that I could live eternally. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary, its treasures untold. Oh, thank you for heaven fair, and the place you prepared me there. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. Life is full of snares, trials seem so hard to bear. It is then that I reach for that hand I know is always there. And finding he still cares, just bow my head and say this little prayer. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary, its treasures untold. Thank you for heaven fair and the place you prepared me there. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. Else. I think Bailey's got one. Bailey. 
shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become. Luring hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame, tempting me to turn around and die in Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man and have riches in the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I'll do. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take It ain't even a choice. I'll take Jesus every time. I appreciate you being here tonight. Anybody else? Anybody? Once again, I want to I just appreciate everybody being here tonight. I know it's Wednesday. I know you're tired, but boy, it sure does make your old preacher feel good to, to get up here and see a good crowd on Wednesday night, knowing that there's still some folks that want to come out and serve the Lord and put Him first. I appreciate that with all my heart's encouraging, amen. Anybody got anything you'd like to say for the Lord before we go on into service? Anybody? Well, I'm going to stand up and say, uh, you said something a minute ago about one day the prayer and praying will all be over. It'll be praising and just having a conversation with my Savior. Wow. That's been working on me since you said it. Uh, I guess we all know that. The folks, let that one sink in. Right. right. You'll be able to look into his face and say, thank you for what you did for me. Yeah. You'll be able to say that for 10,000 years and it won't be over. Right. What a blessing that'll be. Amen. Amen. You know how you, now you've got me going in a direction. You know how you'll be on the phone talking to somebody and in your mind you're trying your best to picture what they look like? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you go somewhere and you walk in a room where they're at and you're like, wow. oh, wow. You know, I thought that it was that guy. Yeah. yeah. That voice fits him out there. And all of a sudden, it's this guy. You're like, wow, I couldn't have been more wrong. Talk back to me. You know what I'm talking about? Talk to me tonight. You know what I'm talking about? That little, but you know what? When I get to there's going to be millions. Scott me, but you know what? I ain't gonna mistake him joy for nobody else. They ain't no way. They ain't no way. I've never seen Jesus with my own eyes. But when I get there, amen, when I see him, I'm gonna know him for sure. I ain't gonna be punching, hey Stephen, you think you think that's him? I've been out before eating and thought I seen somebody that was famous and didn't want to go up and be a fool and say, be like, man, you think I don't know. I, don't, I ain't asking it, probably ain't. Well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to know that I'm going to know my Savior and I'm going to run to Him and bow down. You know why I'm going to know too? Because I ain't going to be the only one bowing. There's going to be a whole congregation of, the, of His children that's going to bow down and be thanking Him. Because see, right now, you've heard me say it time and time again, if we could just see a glimpse of hell. If God could just open it up, Dwayne, I feel like I'm echoing, Jerry. If we could just, if God could just open up hell and give us a little glimpse, man, I wouldn't get this in. It's out of my mouth, and we'd be up here in this altar. We'd be digging the fibers out of the carpet, thanking God that we didn't have. We can't imagine how bad that hell's going to be. We can't imagine. And like I said, if we, if you win and in a thousand years of that torment, my goodness. I mean, I'm, I'm just 48 years old. I can't imagine being burning for 48 years in torment. But if you had hope of ever getting out, even in a thousand years, you'd have some hope. You'd have some, but you know, there's no hope. You won't be there for a thousand, ten, it'll be forever. And our merciful God, one day, when he casts those in hell that's refused him, he's going to turn his back. 
He's going to turn his back on those folks and they'll be right. If we could ever get a hold of that, that Jesus has spared us that. We would, we'd be having services like you couldn't imagine. But yet we sit right here like God ain't done nothing for us. I'm glad I don't have to go to hell. So thankful of that. I prayed one time that God would show me that. And I was in my bedroom. And God said, come into your living room. I got up out of my bed in the middle of the night. And I walked in there. And there was a fear hit me so strong, Tanner, that I hit my knees. And I, was, I didn't see nothing. My living room wasn't hot and glowing. There was just a fear God put on me that took me to my knees. And he said, you can't even handle thinking about it. Much less seeing it. You know why? I, I prayed that, Lord. I said, God, I'll be a better preacher if you'll show me a glimpse of hell. God, show me in a dream. Let me see it. And I kept on praying and kept on. And God took me into my living room and took me to my knees. I felt just like John did. He said, you can't handle it. If I showed you that, it'd drive you crazy. You'd never sleep another night. Because you know what? I'd seen my friends and loved ones just went on down there screaming and burning. Who could go to bed with that in your mind? Folks, it's that real. God's given me a message. I hope to get to preach here in a couple of weeks. I don't care how faithful we are. I don't care if you pay your tithes. I don't care if you live the cleanest life in the world. I was telling Tanner about this. Gosh, if we ain't winning souls, we're failing. We're failing. God help us to get a visual of what hell is and try to help keep our loved ones from going there. Me and Stephen was talking. I prayed in the men's prayer room right in there tonight. I said, God, I've prayed for mercy. I've prayed for compassion on these folks. God, I said, God, it's time to turn up the heat. I said, God, it's time to turn up the heat. Whatever it takes, God, because I know you're soon coming. I don't want to see them die and go to hell. God, whatever it takes in their life. Whatever, God, pull the mercy back. Because grace is still in place, amen. But God, we need to pray that way. I've got a burden for some of my lost loved ones, some of my friends. And folks that think that they're right with God, that I know by their fruits that they're not right. God, give us a burden, amen. To be able to see our friends and loved ones that's lost without God. That's dying and going to hell. And if you're sitting here tonight and you're not sure about yourself. My God, don't let pride keep you in your seat. Don't let nothing keep. There's nothing worth dying and going to hell for. That rich, I don't know why I'm even going this way tonight. But that rich man that lifted up his eyes in hell. He went, he said, Lord, if you just bring one from the dead to go to my brothers. He said, if I ain't going to believe the prophets, they won't believe us either. I've been trying to give you the word of God as long as I've been pastor here for three years. Try my best. And you heard it way before I got here. You know why we do that? Because we don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. So let's be more diligent about praying for our loved ones. Time we get a burden. for the. I'm going to ask you something. Scott, you said what I said a while ago. Made you sit in and think. I want the church to look up here and think about this. How long has it been? And now, when I'm pointing this finger at you, I got three looking right back at me, pointing at me. How long has it been since you went to bed crying over your lost loved ones? How long has it been since we didn't just say, Lord, be with this one, Lord, draw? How long has it been since we've got down and cried tears and said, God, I don't want to see them die and go to hell. God, please. How long has it been since we've had a burden like that? We ought to be feeling the altar right now. God help us that we don't have that burden. Because there's going to be folks that go to die and go to hell that we possibly could have reached. But now we can't reach them all. I was talking to Avery today. He was down and out talking about some stuff. He's a like, man to some people. I said, look. I said, Jesus Christ himself sat right there and taught and preached. And people turned away and went back. I said, there's just some brother you're just going to refuse the gospel. But thank God for a handful, Dwayne, that believe and accept it, man. Thanks be unto God, I did one day. Amen. Anybody else before I get into the message? Okay. Amen, brother. 
Brother Mike shared that in way more detail with the men's group that night. It was a touching but scary testimony. And buddy, I believe when God lets you see it like he did right there, you, you at the end. You at, you at the deadline, buddy. But thank God, I, I know Brother Mike can say, thank God for his mercy and grace. Amen. Thank God. I might not have got to see it, but I was going there. Thank God Jesus made a way. Anybody else tonight? Amen. 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 I'm glad he knows me tonight, don't you? I'm glad I'm counted as one of his, Brother Yuri. Go a lot of places, you feel out of place, amen. That's one place I ain't going to feel out. I'm going to fit right in. Me and Tanner's a whole lot alike. It's scary sometimes how, how, how much we are alike and how we act and think and I don't like being in crowds. I don't like being around people I don't know. I don't want them people talking to me. I don't want to talk to them. I'm just recluse. But you know what? We get to heaven, son. It's going to be a free-for-all. We're going to be talking to everybody. We ain't going to feel odd. We ain't going to feel out of place. Amen. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to going there. Amen. I ain't dreading it a bit. Are you that crossing? Amen. Anybody else tonight? Anybody before I get in the Word? All right, turn in your Bibles. I just feel a good little old peace in the church tonight. I do, I do. Just a, not, not something overwhelming, just a, a peace. And that, well, that's what I'm going to get into here in a minute. Thank the Lord for that. Right. We're going to see him and he's going to do all every need that we have. Right. And it was just laying there and it was dying. It couldn't hold it off. But she knew. She knew I'd been by her the whole way. But I could only go so far. That's right. And she just sits there and just, just let him do his thing. What a mess they right. do. When mom and dad and brother and sister and family has gone as far as they can go, eh? they's a friend. <laughs> they's a friend. Go ahead, brother. Two years ago, I was laying in the hospital. They come in there and look at me and just shake their head, you know. But I know in my soul, and where I was going, doesn't make no difference. I mean, I was ready to go. But they just shake their head. Holy Spirit just come over me, you know, and uh, I just know, you know, everything's going to be all right. Yeah, you know, and Amen. I told him nine days later, I said, I'm ready to go home. What? I said, yeah. I said, I'm ready to go home. Take the auction off them. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> just praise the Lord. He looked after me. Amen. 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 That peace that you felt, Brother Larry, when you're staring death in the face, that, that was that friend. <laughs> that was that friend. Amen. Anybody else? Obey the Lord tonight, please. I'm hesitant to preach.
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I get the best texts from Joey at the right times. I'm going to go ahead and I'll tell this to the church. David Melvin's sick. Ask the church to pray for him. We prayed for him in the men's prayer room. David don't miss unless he's bad sick. He loves church with all of his heart. He was at home watching on Facebook, and he was looking. And as soon as, he, as soon as I got home, he called me. He's like, where was Joey? He wasn't there. And I was like, man, he's sick. Got the same mess you got. He's like, thank God. <laughs> he said, I ain't glad he's sick. He said, but you know what I mean. He said, I'm glad he's got an excuse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He didn't hesitate with him to come. No. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Anybody, hey, I'm glad Jesus truly makes a difference in your life. You know, you don't, it ain't, how long was the case of the do-betters last? I mean, I can't, I, they've been three or four years on, on, Jan, on January the 1st. I, I got me a gym membership. Got me a case of the do-betters, man. I was going to get in shape. Matt got them too. He outlasted me, but he ain't doing it no more neither. It ain't worth starting it. I ain't doing it no more because I know I ain't going to finish. I ain't going to stick with it. But you know what? When Jesus come in and save me, it stuck. It made a difference. I'm going to be an addict tomorrow and next week, next month, and next year. It ain't something that I, you know, the Bible said we're bought with a price. We're not our own. It ain't me who's doing this. It's because God took up a boat in my heart. He took over that old man. He didn't just come in and change him and tweak him and remodel him. He killed him. He killed him. And through the resurrection of Christ, I'm resurrected a brand new creature. I believe in you ought to get saved. You ought to change your names. Amen. It's that real, ain't it? It's that real. It's that real. You know what? Before I used to go out, I'd do something or I'd pitch a fit or, or say something I ought not say. I didn't feel guilty about that. I was like, whoever that was that got that, they deserved everything I give them. Every, boy, now I can just be a little bit hateful to somebody, not say no bad words, just a little hateful and really be in the right. And that Holy Ghost will convict me and say, boy, you ought not have that attitude. You ought not have that attitude. You ought not act like that. You ought not talk like that. That's, that's how it works. You know why? Because there's something new in here. That ain't a case of the do-betters. That's a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm glad I know what I'm talking about. Anybody else? Something on your heart. All right. Turn in your Bibles. I'll be quick as I can. But I'm going to get through this. Every time I start a series, I get carried away on something else and I don't finish it. I want to finish this, and God's put it back on my heart. I was going to do a series on the home, remember? Moms and dads, and I was doing it in the parking lot, and I think I got through one and got carried away into Ruth and never, never looked back. But anyway, I want to revisit that, amen. Turn in your Bible to Ephesians uh, chapter 6. I'll start reading in verse number 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, Having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You can sit down. As we read back here the word stand is mentioned uh, several times. And the Bible says having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And I begin to look up that word shod. I know what it means. But I want to kind of give you a definition. Not everybody knows what everything means. Or, or I may know something that you don't know. And you may know something that I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down for everybody. But shod is an outer covering. That protects the feet. Uh, to give you support. Or traction, amen. And the Bible tells us right here uh, to stand and therefore to stand. Well, if we ain't got traction and we ain't got support under us, uh, we can't stand. I remember when Lori was coming in here and her leg was messed up. She had to have uh, crutches uh, to help hold her up uh, to be able to stand. And she had to have something that had some tra traction to it. And then she got on the little cart. And God, we know that was a fail. Uh, you know, she ended up uh, wrecking that thing because I guess it didn't have enough uh, traction. 
But when you're down like that, all you want to do is be able just to stand up, ain't it? And when, when I broke my back, I couldn't stand. I, lay, I, I mean, couldn't I couldn't stand to lay there. I wanted to stand and to get up on my feet. And that's what we got to do in Christ. He wants us uh, to stand. We can't do no good uh, laying down. We can't be seen or we can't see uh, what we need to see uh, when we're laying down on the job. I remember one time when I worked for the Duke Power, I had my, I was just a grunt and I had my lineman. I had all his equipment up there, Tanner. I had the hand rope right there. I had him set up and he always just called me little man. He said, little man, he said, just kick back and take your snooze. He said, I'm going to be up here about 30, 45 minutes. He said, you've got me prepared. Uh, he said, just lay right there and take your break. He said, if I need you, I'll holler for you. Been working hard this morning. So you know what I did? I dug out the end of the truck right there, man, and uh, grabbed me a piece of cardboard and, and I laid down there. It was kind of cool. That old sun was a hit and I laid down on the cardboard. Now, when we come around there, Matt, the big man hardly ever, I bet he didn't show up three times a year. But there said, oh, Heath, when I should have been standing up. Uh, see, I had more of a job, really, uh, than to do what I did. It wasn't just to get him uh, the material. It was just me and him there. If I'd have been laying over there and that hit man would have got hurt on that pole, I might not have known it. That's why we got to be standing, church, uh, so we can be looking around uh, to see if one of our brother's sisters is in need of our help. But here I was. I had never even done it before, but I laid my cardboard down. I was kicked back, sun like a pig in the sunshine, uh, laying there. All of a sudden, this old this white four-door Lincoln uh, rolled up, man. Old fella got out of the car and he put his hard hat on. I was like, man, I've had it now. I've had it now. But you know what I did? I didn't jump up. I laid right there like I owned that place. He come over here. He said, what? He said, walked in. He said, son, what are you doing? I said, I'm laying here in the sun. He said, I can see what you're doing. He said, I wasn't asking for a smart aleck response. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, I got my lineman. I said, I got him all caught up. I didn't have nothing else to do. My truck's clean. I said, I'm just laying here out in the sun, enjoying the sunshine. He said, well, get up, get on your feet and fold your bed up, put it back in the truck. I'm afraid sometimes when God, that's funny and comical, but sometimes I'm afraid when God looks down on us, hey amen, uh, when we are to be looking uh, for, uh, and being diligent for him, he looks down and sees us and we're laying over here in the shade, hey amen. When we are to be out working for God and doing something for him, there ain't no time to be laying around. We, I just told you, we've got loved ones that's going, dying and going to hell. Uh, we've got stuff the gospel needs to be preached. We don't have time uh, to be laying around. I bet God looks down sometimes and be like, Jordan, we need to get your cardboard up, son. Uh, fold it up, get it back in the truck and stand up and do what I've called you to do. We need to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. You say, what's the gospel? You know what the gospel is? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a lot of news that comes on 13 and 21 and CNN. And you know what? It's every bit bad. Amen. But let me tell you about some good news. Amen. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what the gospel is? That it wasn't God's intent that any should perish, but that all should come. Uh, to the repentance. He made a way. God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Is that not pretty good news? Amen. If we got our feet shod uh, with the preparation of the gospel, uh, we can stand on that promises. You know why so many people so wishy-washy nowadays? Because uh, they don't even know what they're standing on. Amen. It's up to us to get in the Word, uh, to get in the fundamental church, and to stay there and be faithful uh, so that we know what we're standing on. Amen. The preparation is the act of being prepared. We need to be prepared Christians. Amen. We need, you know you need to be prepared to come to church. You need to be prepared to come to church. When I first got, I'll tell this on myself, me and my wife, I just tell all stuff on me because it might help you. You know how many times we come to church and from the house to the church yard, driving in the car, it wasn't nothing but a fuss and a fight the whole way. Threatening to go back to the house. Just arguing and bickering over a little old stuff. It didn't even matter. I wasn't going to be wrong. She wasn't going to be wrong. Hey, somebody talk to me. Am I the Lone Ranger? Is it just us? 
Maybe it's just us, honey. You know what that is? Brother Vernon, that ain't nothing but the devil uh, trying to come and sow a little old seed. Uh, so when you come to church, amen, that you can't get in on the good news, amen. Because all you're thinking about is the bad news that you had coming to church. That's why we got to be prepared as Christians when we come in here uh, to the house of God. We need to be prayed up. Uh, we need to have our mind right. We need to have our heart right. And we need to be living right so that we can come in here and stand on the fundamentals of God and have church service like we're supposed to. But when we come in here and we're standing on everything else and we've been skating around uh, with the things of the world all day and not living right and not acting right we ain't going to come in here and get nothing out of the service. Amen. Uh, we got to come prepared uh, to receive the word. Uh, nobody goes out and plants a garden and just goes out there on old hard baked ground and throws some bird seed out or corn seed or wheat or grass or whatever and expect anything uh, to come of it. But if you want something to come up in your life spiritually, then we got to prepare ourselves uh, to receive the word. Uh, you know what the farmer does? He goes out there and he breaks the ground up. Amen. He gets it ready uh, to receive the word. When we come in here with an old hard heart in a bad attitude, you ain't going to receive nothing. Amen. That's why we got to prepare ourselves for the gospel, the good news. Amen. A lot of people running around and you see them so-called Christians and they're running around everywhere like a chicken with their head cut off and they're running around barefooted. Boy, I'm, I'm tenderfooted. When we was little growing up, I thought I was tough. Way tougher than my sister. But man, we got in the gravel barefooted. She could leave me in the dirt. I mean, we'd be out there playing barefooted and in the grass and have to come up a driveway. And man, she'd just take off running mat like she had shoes on. And me, I was out there just, oh, oh, Lord. I wasn't getting nowhere. I wasn't getting nowhere. She'd be up there hauling me to come on. And I'd be like, my God, I'm coming. What kind of feet you got? There again, that's comical. But you know why so many Christians ain't getting nowhere in their walk? Because they ain't got their feet a shod with the preparation of the gospel. If you ain't got the gospel, you ain't got nothing, amen. You stand